How do you get in to Georgetown University? That is the topic of today's video. Georgetown is a very special school in a very special location. It is this unique blend of very pre-professionally focused undergraduate school, but it's also a very strong liberal arts undergraduate school. Uh, they have a value system over there at Georgetown. They have a great location over at Georgetown. They have unlimited, it seems like, pre-professional opportunities in terms of living and learning in D.C. and taking advantage of that economy that really never goes into recession because, of course, it is so well supported by the federal government. So there's just a lot positive about Georgetown. From the typical college applicant's perspective, there's a lot to fear with Georgetown because Georgetown is anything but common, i.e. they do not take the common application as of this video taping. Now, maybe next year, maybe in five years, maybe in 10 years, who knows when. At some point, Georgetown will become probably more common insofar as they will take the common application one day when current admissions leadership departs. But I am proud to be doing this video at a time when Georgetown has remained strong and firm in its resolve not to take the common application because the application is much more idiosyncratic, unique, and really a, a window into how a lot of elite colleges used to have their applications. But one by one over the last 20 years or so, they've all relented, it seems like, and turned over to the Common App and in the process have lost a good bit of their individuality in the process. Georgetown has not yet done that. But again, at any point in the future, watching this video in the future, maybe we will be living in an era when Georgetown has finally given in and join the Common App. But until that happens, today we're going to be focusing on Georgetown's very uncommon application, which still has a two-parter, basically. There's a application, as they call it, and then the application supplement. A lot of colleges used to have two-part applications where you had to actually mail in part one, and then you would get and complete part two. These days, even Georgetown understands that you're unlikely to be filling it out on paper, uh, but they still give you that option in extreme circumstances, and you can even still put your photograph in the Georgetown application if you so choose. And a lot of colleges, Brown, many others, used to have that option. But again, all of that has gone by the wayside. Brown even used to require, not require, maybe they did require, your own handwriting in your essay. But I don't know if Georgetown ever required that, at least not in my era, but maybe in the past. So today we're going to talk about how to get into Georgetown. Let's start at the very beginning. Georgetown is a highly selective school. I would call it a hyper-selective school, and therefore, you definitely want to read my article on admissions.blog entitled, How to Get into the Ivy League Ethically. This really rings true for a school like Georgetown, because Georgetown wants those scores, they want those grades, and they really do want you to write like you were born in the 1950s or earlier. You know, like they want you to be able to write still, unlike most colleges that couldn't care less. Georgetown wants you to be able to write, and once we talk about their writing sections in a minute, uh, you will see why. Um, so all of that article is very applicable. Read it carefully. It is linked below this video. Uh, and again, it's entitled How to Get into the Ivy League Ethically, but Georgetown is basically an Ivy League level school in all ways, shapes, and for well, all, all the ways that matter, really. Um, except, of course, unlike all the Ivies, it's still, again, as of, as of this filming, it takes its own application, whereas all the Ivies are currently members of the Ivy, uh, of the common app. Um, and therefore they, as I've mentioned, have become a little more common in the process. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is the other thing I love about Georgetown. I mean, there's so much to love about Georgetown, but one of the other things I love about Georgetown is that they also allow you to upload a, res a resume to their uh, application. So they, if you were not satisfied with what you've shared in their extracurricular activity section, you are encouraged and on uh, and allowed to upload a resume, no problem. And I encourage you to keep that resume to no more than two pages, but to learn how to put together a beautiful extracurricular resume that can go into greater depth and breadth about the awesomeness of your accomplishments and achievements throughout your high school career and the summers during your high school career, I encourage you to click below this video and purchase my very short course. It's less than an hour in length, uh, and it's entitled How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume. This course will teach you how to put together a resume really bespoke to your accomplishments, your achievements, and your goals, and Georgetown will review it. So that's really a win-win when you're applying to Georgetown. Again, from the perspective of most applicants, it's, it's daunting to have to start another application and fill out all this basic information, again, like your address and your parents and all this other fun stuff that you have to fill out, your school name. 
but it's worth it if you feel like you're a fit for Georgetown and Georgetown is a fit for you. And Georgetown really does have a unique academic environment and an amazing, like I've said over and over again, location. Georgetown is in Georgetown portion of DC and it is a school that uh, has different schools to apply to. So for instance, you could apply to Georgetown College, you could apply to the School of Health, you could apply to the School of Nursing, you could apply to the Walsh School of Foreign Service or the McDonough School of Business. So again, that's why it's a pre-professionally focused school. I did a video years back comparing Penn to Georgetown and they are very similar in many ways because they're really more pre-professionally focused elite schools, whereas a lot of the elite schools are basically liberal arts colleges with big research institutions attached at the graduate level. And there is, of course, research going on in a lot of those undergraduate schools, but Georgetown and Penn are very similar in a lot of ways in terms of like the schools that actually exist on their campus, their urban nature. But in many ways, again, Georgetown, I think, has the edge in, in location in terms of uh, the specificity of the fact that they have a foreign service school um, and, and they have a school of health, et cetera. So, um, Let's go into depth now on uh, how to uh, approach when to apply to Georgetown because Georgetown is also special in that they don't offer early decision like a lot of elite schools of their caliber. They also don't require you to do restrictive early action like a, a Princeton or a, a Yale or Harvard or Stanford. They are somewhere in between. They allow you to apply early action, however, you cannot apply early action to Georgetown if you are applying elsewhere early decision. So that's the one sort of limitation they put on their, their um, early action applicants. So they, they require you to be able to commit to them if you get accepted early action. And therefore, you cannot apply to Penn ED at the same time as you apply to Georgetown early action. You could, however, apply to Georgetown early action at the same time as you apply to Richmond early action or Michigan early action. Um, or Case Western early action, or even a Chicago early action, uh, though some of those school combinations are relatively rare to have, you can apply to multiple schools early action at the same time you apply to uh, Georgetown early action. So do note that. Is there a benefit, though, of applying early action? The real benefit of applying early action is on your psyche. If you want to know that you've gotten into Georgetown halfway through your senior year as opposed to in the spring of your senior year, I encourage you to get your act together early and apply early action, especially, of course, if you're not applying anywhere else early decision and it's one of the top schools on your list. But statistically speaking, there is truly no real benefit of applying to Georgetown early action like there is at most schools that offer early action. There's usually a slight improvement in your chances of getting in. And of course, at those schools that offer early decisions, sometimes there's a three, four times higher chance of you getting an early decision at those schools than you are regular. But Georgetown, again, is very special. It's very uncommon in that uh, the acceptance rate is pretty similar for early actions uh, applicants versus regular decision applicants at Georgetown. Uh, I think in the most recent year, it may have actually been slightly more competitive to get an actually early action than it was regular. So that's that's a real switch when you think about how it is in most highly selective institutions in the United States. So no tip really for me in terms of uh, applying early action for the benefit of a statistical edge as much as if it is your first choice, rip it off like a band-aid. Let's try to get the best application out as early as possible. Maybe you even throw in a line in that Georgetown specific essay or uh, maybe uh, the one about the academics that this is your first choice, that you will attend if admitted, if this is true. Um, so that they at least can know that you're not using them in other EA schools at the same time and looking at them at the same level, if you will. Um, so that's a way to potentially just underscore that it's your first choice, if Georgetown really is your first choice. But no statistical edge, in fact, in terms of applying. As to applying to one of the colleges at Georgetown over another, does that give you a statistical edge? Again, not really. You know, at a, again, a peer institution like a Penn, the, usually the acceptance rate is much lower at a warden than it is at some of the other schools. There's not much of a spread between uh, one school at Georgetown versus the other. If anything, sometimes the acceptance rate's a little higher at the McDonough School of Business, and the acceptance rate's a little lower, in fact, again, very counterintuitive, at a college uh, at Georgetown. Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty steady. Um, I mean, I think that the real unique niche school there, of course, is the School of Foreign Service, and so you definitely want to be compelling, regardless of the school you apply to, 
because again, it's a very pre-professionally focused school and a lot of the students going in are coming in hot, meaning they really know specifically and in depth why they want to study what they want to study and they need to prove it in the supplemental essays. Um, so we'll get to that in a moment, but uh, statistically speaking, no real advantage to one school or the other. So don't try to worm your way into Georgetown through a back door because uh, there really is not a back door. You have to basically be elite regardless of the, uh, the um, school you're applying to. Statistically speaking with SAT and ACT scores, here's another thing that's unique about them right now. Again, this could change in the future, but in 2022, 2023, Georgetown really does, does still want your scores if you can get to a testing center. And in the future, obviously, it'll be even easier to test because a lot of the tests are now going to go virtual and online. So it'll be even easier to test. There'll be a, fewer excuses why you can't actually show up to a testing center. Georgetown wants good scores. Uh, I would highly suggest, as the article on admissions blog indicates of how to get into an Ivy League ethically, minimum 1,400. But honestly, you really want to be mid-1,400s or higher on the SAT or 33 or higher on the ACT to give yourself the very, very best shot of getting into Georgetown. Uh, but that's just setting the foundation. As I often say, let's get into the weeds. Let's get into the actual application, which is what really separates the men from the boys or the wheat from the shaft. This is where it all happens because Georgetown reads the application very carefully from start to finish, and they have a lot of opportunities for you to write and differentiate yourself. So what do I mean? Well, Georgetown has three different writing opportunities. Number one, the short essay. Briefly, approximately one half page or so, single space, discuss the significance to you of the school or summer activity in which you have been most involved. So sometimes you can recycle this. Like let's say you have chosen to also apply to Vanderbilt or something and you're completing the extracurricular experience essay for them. You know, you could theoretically recycle it as long as the essay is about the one in which you've been most involved. So unlike the common app essay question that comes across frequently on supplements about elaborate on one of your extracurricular activities in greater depth, Georgetown does not ask you to pick any random extracurricular activity. They want you to go in for the kill and describe the significance to you of the school or summer activity in which you have been most involved. How do you frame this essay? Again, it is not a resume entry. So do not just list all of your responsibilities in the activity in which you have been most involved. Instead, you want to treat it like a real essay. What does a real essay look like? In my book, it has an introductory paragraph with a thesis. It has a body with several paragraphs that support the thesis and prove the thesis. And then it has a conclusion that uh, wraps up the essay beautifully, but doesn't restate the thesis, but says something new and thought provoking at the end. So for Georgetown, you want to write this essay in such a manner where you're describing your motivations for getting involved in that activity, either during the school year or summer, and what you take away from that experience, what you'll leave that experience with, if it's ongoing, how you'll leave it, if it's already ended, how you ended it, and, and what you sort of learn from it. Sort of what was the moral to the story for you for, for that experience? What did you learn about yourself, the world around you, that thematic uh, area that you, you focused on in that activity? There's a number of lessons that you could glean from the activity in which you've been most involved. And so this essay is really geared toward not having you just share the objective facts of what you achieved in that activity, but rather share the more subjective feelings you have related to how you grew, how you changed, how you made you a better or different person, and what it may portend for the future. You know, are you going to continue to pursue that type of activity in college and or beyond? Are you not? And if so, why? You know, these are the types of things that you want to sort of button up in an essay like this. It is a growth-oriented essay. You want to be a better version of yourself by the end of this essay than you were in the beginning and show how that activity has uh, been formative for you. How's, how's it changed you? All right, again, you have basically a half page. I call that, you know, 400, 500 words max. Um, so, you know, maybe even less, depending on if you do a really bang-up job and use each sentence for all it's worth. Um, but write the best essay you possibly can there and treat it like an essay, not just like a narrative resume entry. That's what the resume is for. And that's why you want to purchase my course, which I mentioned earlier, how to build an extra, extraordinary extracurricular resume. So that's the short essay. But now we have two longer essays. And each of these longer essays can be, frankly, over 650 words, which is even busting through the limits of the Common App essay length. Um, officially, they're sort of one page single spaced each. 
I usually recommend students give it anywhere between 550 and 750 words, give or take. Um, but the exact word count is not nearly as important as making sure you maximize the value of each sentence in your final draft. Again, you don't want to have throwaway or brainstorm as, as sentences in this. You want to use each sentence for what it's worth and edit, edit, edit until you've gotten down to the most muscular sentences in the intro, in the body, in the conclusion. Here are the essays. For essay number one, as Georgetown is a diverse community, the admissions committee would like you to like to know more about you in your own words. Please submit a brief essay, either personal or creative, which you feel describes you best, or which you feel best describes you. Excuse me, I'm a little backwards today. So in any case, that essay, if you've done a really beautiful bang up common app essay first, you should just use the common app essay. I don't want you to stress out about this. I don't need you to throw in Georgetown specific language in it, though if you feel like you are up to the task of doing so, maybe you do name drop Georgetown once or twice in a new conclusion that's built out a little bit more robustly than your Common App essay conclusion was. But ultimately, I do encourage most of my applicants, if they've already started or completed a Common App essay, and it's going to be really strong when they work with me, it's going to be really strong, to ultimately use their Common App essay, or at least the majority of their Common App essay here for essay number one, uh, because hopefully that showed enough about you. That Common App essay, of course, is a spotlight essay on you. So this is the same goal you have for essay number one on the Georgetown application, which is to show you in a light that you have not yet showed yourself and they would not have gleaned from your grades, your scores, or your extracurricular activities or your letters of recommendation. The Common App essay has the same goal. And so that's why I encourage you to use the same essay or very close to the same essay for this particular essay one on the Georgetown app. But like I said, because they throw out that line, as Georgetown is a diverse community, um, you have that window of open or opening at the end to say something at the end like a little less general than you would say in a common app essay, like instead of saying, and this is how this experience changed me, the end in a common app essay. In the Georgetown essay, you would say, and this is how that experience has changed me. And I know at Georgetown, I will demonstrate X, Y, and Z differently as a result. You know, so you, you can really put that final punch in, that sort of Georgetown call out or name drop at the end, but make sure it's smooth. Make sure it doesn't feel forced. Um, but because it's a Georgetown specific application, you do have that opportunity that you don't have on the Common App to really create a bespoke essay for one school and one school only. So use that opportunity if you can swing it with your Common App essay. I do not recommend you create a new essay. I don't see what the value is in that. If you have not actually started an application for the Common App, uh, then what I normally recommend is if you're applying to schools after Georgetown, use whatever you put in this essay as your Common App essay. So sometimes we actually work backwards and actually align it with one of the Common App essay prompts and then throw it into Georgetown first if it's your first choice school. But whatever the case may be, don't write a why Georgetown essay here because essay number two is where you're going to be able to do a why Georgetown essay in your own unique voice in the framing of the school in which you're going to be applying because Georgetown does ask different questions depending on the school you're applying to. Applicants to Georgetown College are asked, what does it mean to you to be educated? How might Georgetown College help you achieve this? Applicants to the sciences and mathematics or the faculty of language and linguistics should address their chosen course of study. But frankly, if you know what you want to study at Georgetown College and you're applying to Georgetown College, you should also address your chosen course of study. But even in the case of those students applying to the Faculty of Languages and Linguistics and the uh, Sciences and Mathematics, you can and you do have the freedom to allude to things beyond just how you're going to be educated curricularly as a part of the curriculum you're going to study or the major you're going to pursue at Georgetown. You also have the freedom to allude to and use as supporting evidence how you feel you're going to be educated outside of the classroom. So if that means conducting research, if that means involving yourself in the college Republicans or Democrats, which a lot of students will do at Georgetown because it's a very political environment, political city, you know, stuff like that. How are you going to get involved and how are you going to become more educated across the spectrum of your life? while you're at Georgetown. Obviously, the focus of the essay will be how Georgetown College will help you achieve the same. 
Um, and that should definitely be high up in the essay and, and really well supported throughout the body. But again, you can and should use other supporting evidence by the end to sort of augment the overall argument you're going to be making to show that you understand that education is not just happening in the classroom. It is also happening within the life of the mind, the community that you find yourself in over four years as a Georgetown student and as a DC resident. Applicants to this, and oh, by the way, in terms of structure, use that tr traditional structure. Intro paragraph with a thesis, body paragraphs that go into greater depth supporting the thesis and proving the thesis, and conclusion paragraph that does not restate the thesis but says something new, thought-provoking, and a step beyond what you've already said in the body. And again, hopefully seals the deal, makes you more likable by the end of the essay than you've become or you were earlier in the essay or earlier in the application as they read. You just want to become more likable with every new piece of writing you are writing. Applicants to the School of Health, very similar essay. Describe the factors that have influenced your interest in studying in healthcare. Please specifically address your intended major, either global health, or healthcare management and policy, or human science. That's obviously more tailored toward a less theoretical or abstract essay prompt, but ultimately the goal is the same. You want to show fit with Georgetown between you and Georgetown. Uh, same setup, same structure, but just again, really tackle the prompt fully. Applicants to the School of Nursing, describe the factors that have influenced your interest in studying healthcare. Please ad specifically address your intended major nursing. Uh, again, that's sort of holding their hand through the process, um, but basically you're arriving at the same end result, which is you're gonna wanna show a very strong fit between you and Georgetown and Georgetown and you and continue to bang down that, that argument throughout that essay. Applicants to the Wash School of Foreign Service. The Wash School of Foreign Service was founded more than a century ago to prepare generations of leaders to solve global problems. What is motivating you to dedicate your undergraduate studies to a future in service to the world? That framing basically just makes really clear that you should not come across as a self-serving future politico. You've got to frame it from the perspective of how are you going to give your life to service vis-a-vis -vis foreign service solving problems that affect multiple countries and, and really the globe at large. Um, but otherwise, really everything is the same. You want to show fit between you and, and the Walsh School um, and, and show how you are going to be living life and learning 24-7 at Georgetown. That's true of all of them. You need to paint a picture with words of you engaging in specific opportunities that exist either curricularly as a part of your major or school and or if you have the time and space outside of the classroom to show that you will be educated and, and augmenting your learning in other ways in the extracurricular, co-curricular, pre-professional realm um, in DC on Georgetown's campus, maybe even abroad. And then finally, McDonough School of Business. The McDonough School of Business is a national and global leader, so they're not very shy about being proud of themselves, are they, at Georgetown, uh, in providing graduates with essential ethical, analytical, financial, and global perspectives. Please discuss your motivations for studying business at Georgetown. They dropped a few hints there of what they would like you to potentially focus on. You don't have to focus on all of that, but focusing on some of that may make a lot of sense to show that you're not just in it for the money, you're in it for greater good. Uh, business obviously has a lot of individuals who are highly focused on the bottom line, but this essay is obviously being delivered to a school that is housed within the overall Georgetown University campus, and Georgetown is a faith-based school. They're not gonna try to force their faith down your throat, but it is a values-based community. And so the framing of that essay in business I think is wise, and uh, you can be as passionate as you are about the financial side of business, the number side of business, uh, operations and management, et cetera, all that fun stuff. But you can't lose yourself as a person in that essay and you can't and, and just focus on the major. You want to ground yourself in why you want to study business at Georgetown, not just why you want to study business. But that's really true of all of the essay prompts, regardless of the school you're applying to. If you can write the essay that you're writing to this essay number two for Georgetown to another nursing school or another school of health or another school of foreign service, though not many school of foreign services exist, but another international relations major somewhere else, 
you have not tailored it nearly as specifically to Georgetown as you need to. You need to have this essay chock full of Georgetown specific anecdotes and example eh, anecdotes and examples. I don't say I didn't say anecdotes. Anecdotes like you don't you don't need like an anecdote like an illness or medicine, you or a poison. You need an anecdote <laughs> and you need um, uh, examples, proof. Give me proof. I always say specificity is next to godliness. Some people say cleanliness is next to godliness. I think that's important too. But on the college applications, specificity is next to godliness. So keep that in mind as you're writing for a school that still cares about your writing, Georgetown University. If you've done all that, you are going to give yourself the very best shot of getting into Georgetown. I wish you the very best. By watching this video, you are in a better position to uh, seal the deal with Georgetown University. It's a wonderful school. If you get in, go, uh, unless you have eyes for another. But in most cases, if you're going through the extra hoops of applying to Georgetown, you probably are pretty serious about Georgetown, or you're going to wing it, and they're going to get a sense of that right off the bat, and they're going to reject you out of hand unless you present some very unique, diverse uh, background or perspective that allows you to be able to wing it. But most students, the vast majority of applicants around the world, cannot wing getting into Georgetown University. You need to be in it to win it, go big or go home, and that's how you're going to get in with my help you're going to be closer. My name is Craig Meister, the College Meister. To learn more about me, definitely go to collegemeister.com. You can also work with me one-on-one -on -one in your college applications and throughout your entire college admissions process. Collegemeister.com will show you how. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below and also subscribe to my channel because I do more of these videos with every passing week. I will try to push out more. Sometimes I go months without doing videos. Other times I do five videos in a week. It really just depends on my workload outside of making videos because this is just for fun and I hope it's helping a lot of people the world over. Uh, keep in touch with me by subscribing to my channel and again I wish you the very best as you apply to and hopefully get in to the very impressive, very fun, very edifying and educational Georgetown University which is in the best part of Washington DC. See you soon.